Right, we should be back. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> no, I'm back. I, I am back, which is oh. good. You might be. Hang on. Right, let's try that again. <laughs> now I'm in the right place. <laughs> good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ian, I'm Natalie's husband and partner in Planacraft. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial and a general walk round of Canvas. I'm going to be doing most of that for you. I'll get Natalie to come and give me a hand every now and then. There's bits that uh, she's better at than I am. So. We'll just see if we can get a few people to join. Kate's watching. Hello, Kate. Long time no see. <laughs> if you can say uh, hello in the chat, just so we know who's there. And then uh, we should get started shortly. How's everybody coping with the... Uh, Lockdown of isolation. Uh, for some of us, it's becoming a bit of the normal, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we've been locked down for two weeks, so it's not. Uh... It's not new to us. No, not new to us at all. How are we doing? Um, still only got Kate popped up on the comments, so let's see if it'll let me see who else. No, it's not gonna let me see. So give us a, a hi and let us know who's in before we get started, just to save him repeating himself. <laughs> I don't mind. Have a quick pop. We've got five people watching. Yep. Yeah. You did have six. Uh -oh. I've already bored somebody to death. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>, me. <laughs> Are we good to go? Yeah, so we go for get it. Get started and go for it. Okay, so this is Canvas Workspace. It's the offline version, and this is running on a Mac. Um, it looks very similar on the PC. There's a few features that you get on a PC that you don't get on a Mac, but they are minuscule but uh, not really not really worth talking, worth talking about. about i will mention them later um, but it comes in when we get a bit further on in a project um so when you start up uh, canvas you do have to sign in but you sign in once and it should if you leave it it should stay signed in for a long long time it doesn't ask very often for you to re-sign back in so when you first open you get your canvas project pattern collection pop up in front of you and you can select any of the projects if you want to have a play, have a go. By all means, there's usually a load on there. It will keep updating and they go on forever and ever and ever. Um, you also have up the top pattern collections. So these are the ones that you can buy from Brother. Um, there's a few on there. Obviously, we haven't got many of them. We've only got one, I think. Yep, yeah, which is this one, which is just a few additional patterns. Um, which you can then use and the Disney one sends you to a link on the internet which I think links to a Disney page um, so I won't go off that because it takes me off the what we're doing today so if you don't want anything on there if you just want to start your own project you can just close it with the red X if you do need to get back into it at any point this button up here at the top is your canvas project pan and it just brings it back with the up-to-date ones as well. So we can use that at any time. Please let me know if you want me to say anything again. If you miss anything, anything I say you don't understand, please ask me to repeat it. I will say it as many times as you need me to. So going down this side, our top one here, which says shapes, brings out your basic shapes. So these are all the basic shapes that are on your machine, going from your circles, squares, polygons, triangles, ellipses, hearts, and your others. So everything that is on your machine is on here. And you have some particularly useful jigsaw ones down the bottom here, which are always good. Um, if you do want to do joining pieces, you've got the two bits that match, uh, which we find particularly useful for doing certain bits. Uh, among your arrows, which are always good. And all your decorative bits. In this section, you also have your borders. So you have all, again, all the borders you have on the machine, including the infamous ducks. 
For those who know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if Auntie Pauline's watching today. I don't think Auntie Pauline's watching today. Oh dear. That's good because she'll probably lynch me for saying about the infamous dogs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have what they call the logos or words. These are the pre written um, words and they have the full selection. Again, they're all the ones that are on your machine. Julia's watching. Hello, Julia. Good to see you. Hope you're managing okay with the uh, isolation. And to use any of them, you just click and they appear on your mat, as they do. If you do it again, you've now got two and you can move them around. Okay. So, going down to our next one, we have our text. I'm going to change the view over this side quickly. Because I'm we're using something else, really. you can always move it back over if you want. It's because I was using theirs last night. No, that's no, okay. I've just uh, swapped it back. So. Um, so we now have our text tool. So to use our text tool, we just click in the shape and we type our text, press enter, and there it is. And the advantage of using the offline version, so the one you download and install on your computer is up here and also over here you can now use any font that is on your machine so some work better than others and you can go down I think it usually defaults to antique Oakland <coughs> excuse me as your initial font um, but then after that you can pick anything you like um, and you can go for any decide that you like, don't like, um, and it will change it to anything it can. So if we pick one at random, let's go for a nice one, uh, or something different. There we are. We have our greasy spoon, as it's called that one. <laughs> yeah, it's a pickled one. Um, and when you click off it, and there you have your, your text. Now, one of the new features of the latest updates, if you have version 0.32? No, 2.3. 2.3, that was one Or 2.31 if you're on a uh, Windows PC. Yeah, 2.31. Um, we can now shape our texts by using your basic shapes. So if we go back to our basic shapes, and say you want this to curve nicely, we can add a circle. We can pull it underneath, doesn't matter where, just so it's along. We can select all by using Command or Control A. And then over here we have our Edit button. And this is where you normally find your weld and your other bits uh, and your alignments. And right at the bottom we now have this one with text and it says Fit to Path. And by clicking that it then puts our text around our shape and we can then grab the little light we can turn it around we can make it bigger it makes everything bigger we can also once you are happy with where it is so it's all right we can then convert it to shapes now what this does it sets that in stone that it is going to be on that angle and there it is. So you have a nice curved planner craft. And then we can do other things like we can make that bigger. If we wanted to. And then we can do that a lot with it. Any questions so far? Um, layering, but I'll let you... Layering, we'll come back to layering. We'll yep. come back to I will do layering shortly. Yes. I'm um, just doing a little bit on text first, and I will come back to layering. Um, so that's how you curve your text. So I know it's quite a new feature on uh, Canvas. So we will come back to that. I'll just delete that for now. So I've got a blank, blank to blank canvas. Um, that's what I'm going to say about text. Not much really about text. This next button here is where you can import your SVGs. 
So any file that you have in an SVG, for SVG format, you can pull into Canvas and work on. Now, hopefully, uh, let's go for that one. border frame. Yeah. Oh, autumn leaves. Let's try that one. That's a good one for layering. So, yeah. It's a good one for layering as well. Okay, oh, so it brings can it. Can you show last step one more time, please? Of the um, text. I of think. the text. Just the converting to curves. I think. The converting convert. Yeah, yeah. Converting to curves. Right, you like your teeth there, dear, oh, yeah. To go with my glasses. Right. Let's get rid of that. Let's put our text back in. Mm. Let's pick a. Put our planner craft back in. Oh, and I can't spell. <laughs> if you do make a spelling mistake, fortunately, you can correct it. <laughs> so let's get our circle back. So the circle. So we have our shape there. So we select all. We have our fit to path. We'll put it back round so it's up the right way. You can change which way it goes as well, can't you? You can indeed. So, with it, you can also change which way it runs. So, you can have it on the inside edge of the circle or the outside edge. And so, there. So, it swaps that way. So, now when I move my circle around, I want it curved the right way up on the inside of the circle. It does there. And because it's scrunched up a bit, I'll make the spacing a little bigger because it's scrunched it up because it's put it on the inside. Um, Chris was also saying about slightly touching when needing to weld. Yes, so when if you wanted to weld that all as one, you would have your text so it is slightly touching. Um, I will go into that in a second for you. I'll just uh, show this last step on here again of uh, converting it to turn that back around the way it was. Back down to zero. Uh, Auntie Pauline's just joined us. Auntie Pauline's just joined us, so she, she missed my car. Ducks. She missed me, <laughs> Doug. So if she does watch it later, she'll go, oh, little cheeky bugger. Um, <laughs> don't joke. <laughs> so, <coughs> once you're happy with your placement of your text, you have to convert to shapes at the bottom here. So you just convert to shapes, and then that is set, and you can make it bigger or smaller. And you can move it around as one. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah? Is everybody happy with that? So far, so good. So far, so good. Okay, so going back to if you want your text to weld and you have something like that. <laughs> um, obviously, not that way, obviously, because you need this pretty much straight. Is that appalling? I'm going to chuckle at my uh, comments. <laughs> Let's get a different font. Let's have a scripty font. That one's already linked. What's your other scripty font you usually use now? It's Beach and I don't have it on there. Yeah. Because I wanted to use it the other day to show when well doesn't work correctly and I ended up using a different one. So whatever you do, don't use that one because I try. No, no. That, no, that one works. It doesn't. Oh, okay. It doesn't when you weld it, trust me. I was trying to fix it the other day. That one is, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. We have some scripty ones down here somewhere. I'm sure we do. I'll have to excuse me. Uh, talking to myself here, I do that quite a lot. There we go. So that one's not too bad. So you can see there that not all the letters touch. So they're slightly off here. And not. Now, the easy way to do it is if you go into your properties, and here we have character spacing. So we can take it down a bit, and it will pull it all in. So as you get close,
That should work. So we have down to minus nine on that one. And obviously if you go the other way, it makes the spacing bigger, so it gets bigger on the other side. We then go to our properties and go to world. And it takes out all the bits for you. So it all links nicely. I don't think I've missed any. My P's not quite linked there at the top there. But again, you wouldn't want to miss that little bit of the P, so you'd probably just have the P and then the rest of it link. But even the, the cross on the T there as well did nicely. And there are ways that you can work around it if you did decide you wanted to weld it. Yes. Is that okay? Is anybody else? Um, yeah. Yeah, carry on to carry the on. ring next. Okay, well, hang on, I'm not finished yet. Oh. The other joyful thing that this has, and it's really useful, most people don't realise, it's the offset button at the bottom here. So if you want to put a map behind your wood, we can go to our offset, and we can set our spacing behind, so let's say six millimetres. We can decide which way we want it to go. So if we want it to go outwards, so it's on the outside of the shape, or we can have it inwards. Not necessarily we want it to go outwards because we want it to be the outside of the shape. And we don't want all the inside done. What are you chuckling at? <laughs> you can set your edges on if you have beveled edges or rounded edges. I'll leave it rounded. And you can decide what it does with the original line. So at the moment it's set as a cut line. So we can delete it so it just takes it out completely. Or we can set it to a draw line, which is what you'd normally do because at least then it will draw. If you want it to do the inside of your letters or your shapes, untick this box and then it will put your thing on the inside. Although, because we're doing text, we only want it around the outside, we press OK. And there we have a nice matte layer for the back of it. So that way it will cut the bit at the back. So it will now cut this layer on the outside so you have your nice plant around the back and it will draw, it will write planner craft in pen or whatever we decide to write it in or foil it on the inside. Auntie Pauline says, can you just show her how to change it to inches from millimetres and vice versa? Yes. So if you've got, if you're used to metric or inches or millimetres, take your pick. The best way is on the artboard button over here at the side. And you go to here, where you have unit and you literally just swap it over and then when we go back to properties it's changed our measurements all to inches and again to change it back back into artboard back to millimeters and it'll change it again okay Krista says I don't know how to get it to draw at all <laughs> right okay we should go over that shortly <laughs> So I'll go back to my properties one because it shows all my measurements and stuff. I'll come back to those shortly. Um, image tracing, I'm going to get Nat to have a chat with you about later. Oh, thank you. Because that's her favourite toy at the moment. And also, these two at the bottom, I will get Natalie to go over as well. Um, just because she does it better than I do. With the image scanning, what I'll do is I'll do it as a separate stream because it's so involved. Okay, so there you go. So this one here that's the image tra tracing. Um, we'll do a separate stream on because it goes quite detailed, especially if you have the enhanced image tracing set as well. It can get really, really detailed. So we'll give you a separate stream over that and possibly add in the nodes as well with the freehand because they can get quite yeah. tedious, shall we say. <laughs> so, with our, as we have a shape on the mat, let's go quickly across the top. So you have your undo button. Redo if you decide that your undo wasn't what you wanted to do. You have your selection tool, so this is the one that allows you to select on the map each bit and decide what you want to do with it. You have a hand tool. Now this moves your mat with everything on it and not what's actually on your mat. So if you want, if you got it zoomed in, which is this one here, and you need to make it so you can see something, you can use your hand. Oh, go slow me now. Uh, tool to bring things back onto your screen so you can find things. Let's uh, shrink that back down. Making the map think 
Yeah, so it's having a bit of a go slow on me, so bear with me. You do ask it to quite a lot at once. Yeah. So that's our map back on the screen. So here at the top, this one that says cut, we can decide what we want the machine, what we tell the machine to do with our design. So at the moment it's got our border selected and it is on cut, but we can select it to draw. So now that will draw both sets, that one and that one. I'm going to leave it on cut for now just so you can see the variation. Fill colour makes no difference to your design when you send it to your machine. Can um, I just stop you there? Sorry for interrupting. When you're saying about drawing, it's a good thing to point out that that's also the function you would use if you're going to do embossing or um, foiling. Yes. Yeah, so if you do want to do venture into the world of foil quills, um, quickie glue pens to do manual foiling or embossing, you can also use your draw feature here to do all those as well. And then you just select your advanced functions on your machine. Yes. That's another tutorial all over as well. <laughs> um, your line width and line width here um, again makes no difference to your machine when you send it to cut or to draw. Um, it's purely there for your reference. So if you can't see it very well, you want to make a defined edge that is uh, more visible for you on the screen, you can affect it there. If you do want to do a dashed line anywhere, you can select it in here. And this allows you to do things like your score lines with little dots rather than actually trying to cut through it. So it will just punch your little dots and make lovely uh, easy folds for you on those more complex projects. So that's all those. So coming across to the other side now, so on the right hand side. Any more questions before I leave those bits? Not yet, not yet. Don't forget, yet. you can pop any questions in the comments, and I am here paying attention, attentively. Attentively. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, paying attention attentively. So. But you are changing Crystal's life. Oh, good. There we go. <laughs> so, at the top here, we have our properties. So, for each... Ooh. No, there's a challenge for you. What's that? Crystal says, I know I'm being greedy, but I don't know what to do in my rhinestone kit. You can answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> Rhinestones we will live and leave for another stream because that is An yeah another tutorial. So yeah, yeah. So we're, we'll we'll show you a way of doing that without having the kit as well. Yes. Because I don't have that kit. No. So in the properties here. So here Wait on our minute. shapes that we have on the screen, we again we can change how it works. So we can draw or cut, and we also have our fill colours and our line colour. Again line colours are only there for your preference. You can change the width of your line again doesn't really make much difference and you can change your pattern here if you want your dash patterns on the outside. When you have text you can set your font and your style and your character spacing and we have our alignment. So when we have more than one item selected it's not going to let me do it because they're lined up already. Just to be awkward. Oh. Uh, excuse me a moment, didn't want that. <laughs> Wrong button. There we go. Just to prove we all do it. And put that back to the select tool. So you can see when we click off things, it just disappears and goes in. I'll go through all our alignments when we get a bit more. We showed you the path direction briefly when I did the curve text. Up here we have our edit button as well. So this shows us that where everything is on the screen. So X and Y tell you where your project is, is on your mat. So it actually says this is at 40.4 millimeters by 33.7 millimeters into the mat. And it will change if I pick it up, it moves it around and you can see the numbers changing as to where it goes. I'm going to click undo because I didn't say where it was logged. <laughs> this is the size of your project or whatever you have selected. So this one's 168.4 by 35.4. Maintain aspect ratio. So again, if you want something to change, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
Format. So if you have no. a square and you want to change it to a rectangle. No, no. So if it, it maintain aspect ratio, changes it all proportionally, yeah, so, doesn't so it? So it keeps it all in proportion. So if yeah, you have so a square, ticks, it keeps it, it square. Yes. Yeah, when it's ticks, it keeps it square. Yes, when you when untick, untick it, 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 it allows you to change yeah. them independently. So like you want to make a square rectangle, you could then change those independently. Okay, if, I'm 30 seconds behind everybody. That's okay. <laughs> With the resize, if you want to resize something by 10%, you can use the resize. If I select everything on my screen and click resize, if I change that, if I say I want it 110, 120, it changes it by that percentage. So that's yeah, so nice and easy to change. And again, you've got your aspect ratio here at the bottom, so you can play with it and it will change it proportionately with what you've got on the screen. So again, good to play with. Let's just get something selected. So on the options here. Your angle, again, you can change, you can rotate, you can play with and get it all the right way. Um, unlike on the machine, you don't have to do it in 110 or 45 degree rotations. You can just type your number in and it will do it for you. Um, particularly useful when you're using HTV. So your heat transfer final, you have your flip buttons. So if I can get to the text, no, no. Text. Thank you. <coughs> and you want to flip it because obviously you want it backwards. You would flip it so your text flips the other way. I will flip it back because it's otherwise it doesn't make sense. And again, if we command all, we can flip it so you, your background shape flips with it then. And you can do it that way if you really want to. You can have it upside down if you really want to. Why you'd want it upside down, I don't know, but some people do. <laughs> Again, we've got other line objects. So if we have another set of objects on the screen, um, we can use these to align to the left, center, right, bottom, the middle, and top. And we have distribute objects. So we can horizontally distribute them. So they decide through the center of a line. And you can also do it vertically, so they go up and down as well. And then at the bottom, we've also got our process overlaps, our weld, our divide, subtract, uh, and that's it. And of course, our offset button, which we've already used to take it across to make our mat layering at the back. Uh, everybody okay so far? Any more questions? Am no I going questions? too quick? Oh, hang on. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, Crystal. A screw is made for deeper in love for my cutter. Thank you. That's what I do it for. Yes. <laughs> there we go. So, our next, the most important and the most useful and button. Don Don's is watching. Don Don's is watching. Hi Don, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Um, so, our next and probably the most, I think, useful button that comes on the online and the offline version of Canvas is this one here, which is our layers. So you may have seen me pop into this just briefly a minute ago. Um, the reason being usually, and I'm just going to do it now, because my text is underneath my matte layer, I can't select it and I'm struggle I will struggle to select it because it's underneath the layer. So over here, I can go to that one and it will select my text rather than selecting that one. Now I can also set in here, whether it's a draw or cut line, with these little icons here so you can see that the shape at the top is my outline shape is a cut line and this one here is a draw line. I can also hide it and put no, it back. It won't transfer to the machine. Yes if you're transferring a file to your machine and you have it hidden it won't send the particular parts that are hidden so if you want to send just the text you can send just the text you can send just the backing mat, or you can send it all. Yeah, You can also lock something, so you can't pick it up. So say for instance I'm going to lock the background shape and move the text. I now can't click on... There we go, so I've now picked up my text, but I can't pick on this background shape. So it won't allow me to do anything apart from move the text. So that background shape is locked. So I found this particularly useful when we were doing 
um, a design that had a circle in the middle, which was your reference bit, and then you were attaching a bit so they were all lined up to your circle. So like doing text that you before they had the um, fit to path. Fit to path button, you had to do it manually, and you moved each letter individually, but you still had your shape. So in that, you had your circle in the middle, and you could lock your circle and then just move each letter individually, which was very helpful because obviously your circle didn't keep moving every time you clicked it by accident. Um, and you, you can't lock online in no. the same way that you can on there. So again, this the offline version is so much better to use, um, personally. And if you leave it locked by accident when you send it to your machine, it won't send it locked to your machine. It can't see that. It's just there for your reference when you're using the software on the machine, on the computer rather than on your scan and cut. So that's layers. I'll put a few more on in a moment just so we get <laughs> another bit. That locking circle is what I needed. He's a magician. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's a magician, you're going to think well. <laughs> <laughs> see what that can do I'm with a it. Sorcerer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I only do the basics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when it gets complicated, I hand you over to Nat and let her deal with it, because the yeah, eyes don't. Um, I'm not creative, am I, dear? Yeah, so you keep saying. <laughs> um, so if I add another couple of shapes, just to so they pop up, you'll see they come up on the top here. There we go. So we've got three or four layers on there now. So, again, each of these shapes we can do individually. We can also rename them. So this one we can know is our text. This one we now know is our map, so we can say that's our map. And we can rename that and say that's a square. And you just get to this just by clicking on it twice. Once and then again, slowly. Um, yeah, it's not a double click. It's not a double click action, it's just once and then again. And then we can go uh, edged square. I don't know what it's called. And leave that one just a shape. So again, now we can move these around in agility. So if I don't want those two to move, so those two are my leg at the back. So at the moment I have my first fuzzy shape, so I can move that down. Put that down here for me. And then we have another one. Who's taking the Mickey? Not taking the Mickey. Crystal says, says that you're blowing her mind. Oh dear. <laughs> and then we have a box as well. If you do have any questions afterwards, we're generally around to answer questions, aren't we? Yeah. So we can resize. There. Um, going back to our alignment tools, just briefly. I was going to say, do you want to pop three squares on there so that you can... I have different shapes, so it's all right. Okay. I did different purposely so that you can see what it does. So we select the shapes we want to align. So you can see now that these have come into play. So we can assign them to the left, which it does. If I click off for a minute and just move it over because otherwise you start aligning things and it goes really weird with you. Um, we can align to the right. Aww. What? Well, that's all right. I don't mind that point being nice. <laughs> I take back the duck comment. No. <laughs> <laughs> we can align them to the top. To align to the top. And also to the bottom. And then last but not least, we have our centre one. So we can align it to the middle. So it snaps it to the middle. And if I put it... Sort of offline, but above. And if we go center, it'll put it to the center. We can also set the space between them. So if we want them closer, so if we go, we want it 10 millimeters. I didn't do anything. Naughty. Did you not have them selected? I did. There we go. So let's move them so they're now. And then we can go centre again, and we know those are exactly 10 oh. millimetres apart. Cool. It's very clever. 
useful for if you're um, creating a book with a spine that you want to create the cover for. Yes. Yeah, get rid of those. So far, so good. Everybody happy so far? Yep, yep. Yep, wonderful. So that's our layers. So what we also can do, if we have lots and lots of layers, which one of the projects that that does usually does, because um, they're a lot, that that's way. why. So when they're locked, you can also select them. So if we say that's our design, we can now group it as well, which is Command G, and it has a group. Or Control G on a PC. Or Control G, sorry, it's on a computer here, on a PC. And then it will change, and you can have group. And then you could call that logo. And so you've got your logo, and you've still got your individual bits. You can still select the individual bits. You can still change the individual bits, but it keeps it within that group. That's all there. And the last button that I'm going to show you very, very quickly is the artboard one. Again, we've seen this a little bit. So the artboard one here allows you to set the size of your mat. So if you do have the bigger 12 by 24 mat, you can set it to the 12 by 24 or the 12 by 12. Again, you can set your sizes here. So you've got your ruler, so you can do your millimeters, so you can do inches or millimeters. Take your pick. You can turn your ruler on which some people find helpful or not. Note when you put your ruler on, your naught is in line with the edge of your mat, not this bit here. A lot of people seem to think that the naught should be over here in the corner, and it's not. They've actually lined it up so it lines with the middle of your, where the edge of your mat is. Okay. You can turn the mat image on and off. So you just have the grid. Some people prefer it, some people don't. You can turn the grid off. So it's just blank. Implement it. And you can snap it to grid. So when it snaps to grid, it will snap to the points of your corners on your grid when you insert a shape. And then you can set your grid spacing. If I put this back to inches, it makes more sense for a moment. So it's currently set to one inch, which is the same as your mat that you have that you put through your machine. And you can set it up, up to two. So you have two inch squares rather than one inch squares and it goes right down to a quarter of an inch so you have lots of squares if you really want that sort of detail but most people leave it on one because that matches your mat and it makes it easier for counting squares when you're doing things like vinyl or knowing what size your card is you can at least then just use it as a, a hole and you go right so i need Say we we're cutting that out, you'd need three by three by seven as a piece of vinyl if you wanted to cut it out of vinyl. So you know that your piece of card you need needs to be at least three inches by seven inches. Give or take. So I hope that's been helpful. And if there's any questions, I'll quite happily answer any uh, questions there are at the moment. Do you want to just go into um, one of well one of the layering designs? So clear that off the screen and put one of the layering designs up and just show exactly how you can use the layer names to give yourself instructions for future. Oh, I've missed a bit as well. Oh, oh dear. I was naughty. Sorry. Right <laughs> at the top here, where we have our file. Um, obviously, have new, open, recent. Um, if you save your file without going um, in Canvas, it saves it as a Canvas Work Project file. I think it's CW PRJ, PRJ um, which is all very well, but your machine can't read it as a scan cut. Only Canvas can open that file. If you want to save it in a format that is suitable for your scan and cut machine, you have to export it as an FCM. So this option here, and then you can save it as an FCM file. So you think you could put it onto a USB stick, or however you, you want to, USB straight cable. into your machine, straight across onto your machine, if you've got it plugged in via USB cable. If you're lucky enough as we are to have one that is able to send files over the internet, so 700, 700 800, 
No, not 600. Not 600? No. No, okay, so 789. Yeah, all uh, the DX. And, yeah, all the DX machines. You can transfer your file via the internet, which will then send it across onto your machine. And anybody who tells you you have to be on the same network to make that work is wrong. We sent a file from London to our machine here at home, um, which is not London, not by at least 120 odd mile. Um, <laughs> and the file was here when we got home on the machine waiting to be cut. So they don't have to be anywhere near. So if you're doing a project in a class somewhere, um, obviously not at the moment, because obviously there won't be classes running. Um, but if you do a later date, go to a workshop and you save, a f you want to send your file to machine when you get home, you can send it and it'll be sat there waiting for you when you get home to transfer and then to cut. Useful for those that don't want to cut the scanning yeah. and its cables and its mats. Yeah, because it gets also cumbersome and heavy. And, yeah. yeah, and hopefully, you know, when you get there, you've remembered it all. We've had a few occasions, haven't we, where yeah, we've people forgotten have forgotten power, power cables. Power cables and all sorts, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Also, you can, um, if you're using um, your cloud for each, um, a machine that's connected to the internet and you scan something in, you can also import it from your machine. Yeah, so, so two-way talkie-talkie. Yeah, so you can also pull it from your machine onto your map and then you can play with it on the computer and then send it back if you're getting trouble on the machine that you can't do something. Send it to your computer, sort it out. And send, it back. send it back to your machine. Useful for screen size rather than trying to do everything on a little yeah. tiny screen. You have all your edits that we've been through are all in edit if you need them. Um, layers again, you can duplicate, you can lock, unlock. Um, if you need to group something, you've got your Did group. Did you do the duplicate button on the layers panel down the bottom? No, not yet. You've got your zooms in and out, you can hide your rulers, snap to grid. If you want a quicker way to get to your, if you don't want to be messing around up the right hand side to change your unit, you can go to display at the top, unit, and just change it in there. So you can change that to millimetres if you want to up there. Or you can put it back to inches, depending on which way you want it. Window, if you've got more than one project open and you've got a few helps there at the side, if you need them. Not very often use that, most of them are probably the one you use more is if you're checking for the update, but it usually comes up and tells you there's an update, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, the button Natalie was just talking about in the layers button, right down the bottom here, you have duplicate. So if I wanted another copy of that logo. You're going to struggle to see that on there because the little border across the bottom is going to get in your way. Uh, okay. There's a little button down here. It looks like two squares with a little plus in it for those who can't see it. So I can click duplicate, and there we are, I now have two logos. So if I'm doing lots of, if I wanted to cut it out more than once, and I wanted exactly the same thing, over and over and over, oops, and then I can get, there you go, I can fit four to a screen, or oh, maybe not, three to a screen. Now I'm going to say you you over the edge of the bottom. The Any questions thing. so far? There you go, see I can get four to a screen, just to prove my point. <laughs> Is there anything that anybody has particular questions that they want us to answer that I haven't answered? Ah, right, so um, going back to having multiple shapes on the board, so if you want to get rid of those and just put three random shapes. Three random um, shapes, let's have a square. Crystal says, the screen that has the world on group what? <laughs> <laughs> let's have a circle, let's have a star, I don't know, there we go. So there's four on there right, at the moment. What is the last one? The, the one that we were just talking about was the duplicate button at the bottom of the layers panel. So it's this one here with the three, uh, three, like the three pieces of paper. And down the bottom, right at the bottom of the screen, I don't know if you can see it on my screen or not, because obviously we've got the bar across the bottom. There is a, next is there's a rubbish bin which is delete. 
and you also have a little one which comes up with duplicate when you hover over it which is two little squares and a little plus inside the top square and that duplicates whichever layer you've got selected okay and can um we do a weld and work across the the list so it can see what it does okay so let's move our shapes off the table so let's weld those two together because it looks funky So we'll line those two up, we'll select both and then we go into our edit section. So when you weld it, it basically joins the two together and gets rid of the bit. Yep, which is what most people... What most people use these buttons for and yep. <laughs> no one do much else with them. Um, if I just undo that briefly, because the joy is well, if you don't like it, you can undo it. <laughs> Which you can't do on a machine on the um, on the CM machines. You can't undo a weld. So well, it is, you can. Can you? I'm sure we. I'm sure we were playing no. with it. Was it that? I don't think so. So divide. What does divide do? Divide basically. Um, so let's say you've got two shapes overlapping. It's actually only turning it into three shapes because where your design overlaps becomes a shape in and of itself. So if you do it for me. There you go. Now, if you drag it out so that you can see each of the shapes, so click off it for a minute, and then you can see just how that works. Um, divide is, uh, let's see, how would I? I usually explain it as it's a bit of a cookie cutter, so it puts you through all your layers. Um, there's very few occasions where you'll want to use it. And they're quite specific applications as well. So if you're finding that you're struggling to weld text, you might use divide to try and break it up. If you've got a file where it's got all the shapes in one layer, you'll want to use to divide to to separate, separate those out into their individual elements. Okay. Yep. So if you step back for me. That's what I can use something else now because that's divide done. So our next button across is remove overlap. So let's let's rotate that the other way. Let's have it upside down. This is your second most used function. So let's pop that in there. There we have that one and that one selected. Is that okay? So we're going to remove overlap. Okay. And then drag it out so we can see. So now we have. So basically, where the shape has overlapped, it's actually pointed it through. So this is different in terms of divide. Um, whereas divide will, will give you. Um, three pieces. Three pieces. Remove overlap will give you two because it literally punches the topmost shape through the layers underneath. And it's good for using if you're doing a multi colored vinyl design so that your design lies like nice and flat. Okay, last but not least, that's subtract. Yep, it's subtract. So if we put our circle so it overlaps. Attached to that one and uh, press subtract. There you go, it takes away all the. Yep, so because your circle's underneath the shape that you just made, it's punched the top shape from the bottom shape. So the other thing to bear in mind to get it in the right order, you want the shape that you are subtracting on top and the one that you want to subtract from underneath. And do that if we wanted to do it the other way around. If we go back to our layers, so we can see our circle is here. If we want that as our top shape, we just drag it up to the top. So now if we select with that one and that one, and we do the subtract again, it should do it the other way around this time. 
There you go. It does it the other way around. So there it is at the top. And those are the four buttons across there. Anything else? Um, I think that's that's it in terms of the basic functions of Canvas, isn't it? I think so. If you do have any questions, just quickly put them in the comments and we will do our best. <laughs> Do you want to just quickly pop into the layer design and just go over how I set up my files? But yep, so let me just... For those people that, that haven't had any of my designs yet. And the fun. So we're going to import a file. Oh, there we go. So let's go autumn leaves because we like that one. So it'll bring it in small, but that's nothing new. So we want to select everything. We're just going to hold shift so it keeps it all proportionate. Make it a bit bigger. There we go, so you should all be able to see that now. So as you can see, it's got at least five layers there that Nuts designed. So when we go into our layers, they're all individual, you haven't done this one. Have I not? Pick one of that up. It's because you bought it in as SVG. Actually, go to open. Open and open FCM rather than... And open the CWPIJ file. Should be one there. Trust not to pick the one. Have you managed to pick the one that hasn't got it? So, let's try that one again. <coughs> we don't want to save the change to that one. So, there we there go. We go. So as you can see here, we have each of the frames. So we have the layered frame, the piece frame, the flat frame. And all you basically want to see how you shape around the outside. You have the flattened border underneath. We have the flattened frame, which you probably won't see if I don't take that one off. It very, very lightly makes a difference. You can just see the outline edge on the on here. If you look closely, this outline edge here disappears with that one. So when you take it off gives a slightly lighter colour. We have the actual shape of the border. And then you have all the individual bits which we can change, but they're also that we can, if we don't want to see them all, we can shrink up. And we can turn them all on. If you want to set an entire section to scan to cut or draw, if you click on it, I thought we could change it. Yeah. Yeah, you click on it and then change it at the top. Oh, up here. Yeah. Sorry, here. Yeah. At the top. So, up here, and then you can change it to draw, and it will change everything in that particular group to either draw or cut, depending on which way you set it. All the layer titles are ones that we've put in. Yeah, so these would have said just shape, 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 and these are ones we've put in ourselves to make it yeah. easier. And the layers, like I said, are probably the best feature that Brother brought into um, Canvas for ease of use and makes life so much easier with all your designs. Um, and being able to change it easily, select each individual element um, easily. So even if I now go into the piece frame and only want the little, little tiny circles, I can select just those. And if I wanted to, I could delete them. I could take them out. I could move them around. It won't make it, you know, it, I can play with it if I didn't, you know. It's so could much easier. Just... Could you just open the file that we were using yesterday, the July one? The July one. I thought I hold my hand, I thought it was July. Um, because that's got things like gems and stuff in, so you can... Yeah, so let's get rid of that. Oh, that didn't work. Just, yeah. just open, mark, yeah. import. Open recent July, it's Mum Blossom, there we go. Don't save changes. Don't save because that would just delete everything. So this is the one we were looking at. So this is one that Nat's saying about how she's written in the instructions as well. So your backing panel is a six by six piece of card. You have your centre panel which you can cut or draw. 
you have your frame which you cut, you have your stencil that you cut, you have your gem pearl template. So on this one, um, if you're going back to using the rhinestone kit, um, the section we have on this one actually shows you where you would put each of your rhymes, uh, rhinestones, put my teeth back in. The idea being that you would cut it as a stencil and then actually sweep your gems over the top of your stencil to put them onto your... There you go. And then you've got the flower backs again, got cut or draw, top layer, cut or draw, stems, you can either draw or cut out of vinyl, so again, you know, giving the option, and the last one, which is the inside bit, you can either draw it or foil it, and when it's done, this was all drawn and cut, this is what we created yesterday on our, well, I don't know how you can see that, if not, let me know. Uh... I'll let you know because time delay. Oh, you're getting there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. A little bit higher, a little bit closer. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And that's what that little file created yesterday. So we've answered all questions. Uh, yep, yeah, so far. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to add to that one today, or are you going to leave that for today? And then... Well, you want to do your challenge. Oh, yes, we have a challenge, of course. Um, I shouldn't really be in the room for this one, but never mind. I'll go out of the room, it's fine, I'll go and top up my glass. Go and top up my glass, go on, get some more juice. Keep drinking, everybody, keep drinking. Yes. <laughs> now, for those who don't know, um, Friday is Natalie's birthday. Um, and it's a big birthday this year, um, which will probably lynch me for telling you, but she's 40 this year, same as me. Um, and my challenge to you all is to see if you can all make her a birthday card to post on the group by Friday. So it can be anything, you can use your scan and cut, you can use any of the things we've shown you today, um, but pop them all into the Planet Craft group and then she'll have a nice collection of birthday cards. Obviously we can't come out um, and we're hoping to try and do a um, like a conference uh, video chat as well for her for a birthday so everybody can wish her a happy birthday together. Um, so hopefully that's going to work. But we shall see. But keep an eye out on the uh, group for the information on how to join the, um, the Facebook um, the conference call so you can all wish that happy birthday and your challenge should you wish to accept it is to make natalie a birthday card for her 40th birthday which is on friday okay thank you all very much for watching and hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow for another stream um i don't know what time yet so keep an eye out on the chat and it'll be up there soon if you do have any questions we'll be online most of the afternoon so do come in there Ask any questions if you have any. Um, we we'll, we try to help the best we can most of the time. Um, we also have other options. If you're having troubles with your computer, we can come on to TeamViewer. Um, we do Skype. We do Facebook private chat. Um, and a couple of, is it Zoom? The new one. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, or Zoom, Zoom as it is new, which is hopefully going to allow us to have that conference call. Um, but that's all new to me, so it's going to be a bit of a play. Maybe that we might even be brave and try a virtual workshop at some point. Yes. <laughs> so, once again, thank you all for watching. And like I said, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat or send us a private message. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Hi. Bye. Bye.